Welcome to your medical physics channel. Today we're going to talk about TLD and OSLD for clinical use. We have great guest here in our channel is Jocelyn Luna. She is a, a master degree in medical physics. She studied in Costa Rica and right now she is uh, talking an advanced program in ICTP here in Trieste. We are uh, classmates and uh, we want to, to share this important topic uh, to you. So, Jocelyn, how are you today? Hi, are you? Benissimo. Nice. Um, good afternoon for everybody. I'm talking about the TLD 191. It's about the TLD and OLD in the clinical use, mostly about the dosimetry aspect. There are many different kinds of TLD. Could be as a solid, as a dish, microtube, or sheet, and also with different types. Or could be as a power, like this one, the big one. And the OLD only can be in a solid form, as a dish. You can see it here. Okay, in this table, you can see the different uh, TLD and OSD with the chemical form and the commercial name and the most important characters. But this report focuses in the TLD 100 and the nanodop PM because they are useful in the radiotherapy environment. About the dose calculation, is the same matter as the TG fifty one, so that those determined is equal to the correct signal for the calibration courtesy and the different correction factor. It means the beam quality correction factor, the fading correction factor, the dose no linearity correction factor, and the angular dependence correction factor. Okay, the correct signal. Depends is it is a OSD or TLD. The OSD, you can make different uh, readings. So the correct signal, it will be the road signal for each depletion correction factor for each reading minus the background signal. And for the TLD, only there is only one reading, so the correct signal is equal to the road signal minus the background signal. But the background signal are negligent, and also for the OLD who have the deflation factor is very small amount. It means like 0.05 percent. So at the end, the correct signal is equal to the road signal. Okay, relate the the signal, the cone signal with the dose. So this calibration factor is defined by user and user condition specific, like a geometric dose, being quality, orientation, reading mode. So you need a specific set of evaluation with a specific condition. And you need a standard, a standard dosimetry with a no dose. And by this formula, you can find the calibration coefficient where this, the M0 correct is the correct sign for our standard. And the D0 is the no dose to the standard. And each specific correction factor in our calibration conditions. Okay. But there's two options for calibration conditions. It will be like high precision. High precision, we should uh, read for each station and irradiate the standard for each station and we find the calibration coefficient for each station. Uh, also, we characterize um, our calibration condition applying the correct factor, even the individual element sensitivity uh, factor. And it's better if our standard evaluation condition is equal to the experimental condition. 
But another uh, process is the high efficiency. So we create a calibration curve. And in this calibration curve, we can find the calibration coefficient and also the linearity correction factor. Um, but we have to verify the calibration coefficient for the TLD with the standard and for the OSD with a constant symmetry. And also for the OSD, we can find with this constant symmetry the fading correction factor and the depletion correction factor. And for a high efficiency, we have to use um, individual element sensitivity window factor. Um, we neglect the most correction factor except the linearity correction factor that we find in our calibration tool. Okay, the linearity. The linearity correction factor is mean the response is superlinearity are really found out. For the CLD, it's linear of the four to five grades. But for all of these, you can see in this uh, graphic the for a low dose, it's linear and it's going to be a super linear for a million dollars. And you can see here there is a correction for for two to three percent for a two grade, uh, more than five, 15 percent for a 10 grade. So we need, we need it to establish, it, establish this correction linearity in our calibration curve. The fading correction factor is mean the spontaneous signal loss with the time. For the TLD, it's a few percent in the first days and then becomes to 1% per month. But it's different for the OLD. You can see in this figure, there is a third fading in the first eight minutes. And then it's coming to be 1% per month. So you don't grip during this eight first minute is the recommendation for the OLD. There is a beam quality factor. There is two, the intrinsic energy dependence. It means its property for the LD cells is a change in final for those per energy. And it's a smaller and it's only for the TLD. Another one is a medium depend energy dependence. It means the change of signal compared to water because we put the TLD or OLD in a cavity with different mediums, mostly tissue. Then the angular correction factor is the change in signal compared to angle of incident. For a TLD, there is no angular dependence a MB, but for a long energy, the symmetric form is important because you can see this angular dependence this with a sheet of TLD. For the OLD, depends on the beam radiation direction, on phase or ended. From Monte Carlo calculation, you can find the 2% difference between the radiation beam direction on phase or end or ended. What about the bad calibration? Bad means a group of the symmetry in a single production rod. Okay, we assume that they have all the same characteristics, except the individual element sensitivity. But if we can find this individual element sensitivity by this formula. This is average, the average response of our batch over the individual um, response of the of each detector. And if you measure each um, individual element sensitivity, you find this histogram. But it can see too much time to read each symmetry. So it's better to select a dosimeter within a uh, individual sensitivity window. It means that if we, if we want a tolerance like 2% plus minus 2%, it means in this histogram, only this value of sensitivity, and we assume that these dosimetries in this range have the same uh, sensitivity. 
So it means that we select a window for an individual element sensitivity factors. Now at the end, our correct signal is equal to the individual sensitivity uh, factor per the wrong signal. Okay. In this table, you can find a summary about how um, how our recalibration factor depends on the symmetry time and the batch and the reading system. The deflation factor depends on the symmetry time and the reading system. The linearity factor depends on the symmetry time, the batch and the reading system. The failure factor depends on the symmetry times. The quality factor depends on the symmetry times. The angular factor depends on the, the symmetry time are also for the form of the detector and the individual sensitivity um, factor depends on the symmetry time, but and the reading. So our determining dose is associated with uncertainty and this uncertainty depends if the situation is controlled, which means reference in radiation condition and staining handler or less control situation, like variable condition, is here when we are measured in a patient, and also for length experience handler. So in this table, you can hear a summary about the uncertainties on those for the OLD and TLD. It also depends on its high occurring process or high efficiency process. You can see the for less control situation, there are more uh, uncertainties associated. And also for a high emphasis, you find a more um, uh, uncertainties than a high occurrence process. Commission and QA. So the in this uh, TG one hundred and eighty one, there is a table for a commission with a process and every detail for uh, the TLD or the symmetry and the TLD and all the reading. And also there is a table for a QA. It means the process per session and per year. And also this process for the TLD and OLD depends on the high precision or high efficiency process. So the big advantage of the TLD and oil is that we can reuse. The TLD we can reuse by erasing the signal with a heating. And this heating means the annealing process. And it takes it like uh, 24 hours. And we can reuse indefinitely with a consistent annealing. But the problem is the sensitivity is highly affected by the annealing. So we should verific, verify the individual sensitivity factor through at least three cycles of irradiation. And we should anneal all the sector as, as a group. And also we need a real protocol and QA program. Okay, the OSD, we can um, erase the signal expose the, the detector to the line for 24 hours. This protein is the bleaching. And the bleaching doesn't empty the trunk. What happened, uh, the signal is competing with the new signal. And there is a recombination. And the recombination changes the sensitivity and the supralinearity of the detector. And this changes dramatically uh, thin rate. That's why we don't have to use same way. Also, there is a blessing program for the OLD or of core QA program. And when the blessing is complete, 5% of the detector we should read to ensure that the residual signal is approximately the pattern. About safety, uh, they recommend the gloves and hand washing facility. And um, also there is a safety information for the for the CLD, this means a data sheet. And for the nanodog, there is no indicator about the any biologic harm. And in this table, you can see the harm rating for the CLD 100 are the nanodog. 
and then the general heading. So the TLD, it's storing on a climate control environment. We're going to be warmer for at least 20 minutes to allow the PPM to temperature to stabilize. A consistent temperature should be in the lane. And of course, the amount of power may a difference if the TLD is in a power point. Because if it's too little, uh, the signal could be depend on the mass. Of two months, there is a cell alternation and changes the sensitivity. For the OSD, keeping ambient room, room light, and storing a climatic control environment to minimize the fading effects. Um, the nano dot can summary in water for a single time. Um, of, uh, also, as the PLD to be warmer for the manufacturer recommendation. Um, another point, there is a rotated node allow the operator for the mechanical position to add the volume of the OLD in the simulated line sources. That, that's everything for today. Thank you too much. Thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn. Very interesting. I have some question for you. And maybe uh, later I'm going to make you some question if people make, make comments uh, to the video. But right now, a question is, what do you prefer? TLD or OSLD? And in what conditions do you use uh, each one of them? Okay. For radiation protection, I think it's, it's everybody is using the TLD. It's, it's easy to manage to handle. Um, I think so. It's, it's cheaper also. And um, for if you need a really uh, um, high accuracy, um, a really good um, it's mean for, uh, for uh, exactly measurements. I think. Um, the OLZ. The OLZ also because you, you can swim around water. Um, that's why I think it is, is useful for the uh, in vivo dosimetry. Ah, uh, okay. Um, I have I have used TLD in personal dosimetry and I have seen uh, OSLD in radiotherapy as a comparison tool between two laboratories or between two clinical centers. So, but um, uh, thank you for everything, Jocelyn, and see you, see you later. Uh, I, I hope that you can uh, be with us in another occasion. Okay. Bye. See you. <laughs>